Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for staying to the last, I guess, uh, for the last performance. I know we have a few more programs in, uh, after this, but uh, um, I, my name is Xiao Yu Wen, and you can probably find my bio in the brochure, so I'm not going to introduce myself too much. Um, and I want to maybe point out um, Liu Ping here, who actually didn't appear in his performance, who, as the artist, did the work message, if I get it correct. Um, and Lisa gave me a very hard task in summarize the three very unique and distinct performances which just happened now. Um, and uh, I have to apologize that I was not here and so I was not able to see Tang Dixing's performance yesterday, um, but I was able to hear a little bit of description of what, he, what his work was yesterday. So I'm trying my best um, to maybe give just a few sentences of each performance in my little comment. And I, by no means I'm an expert of um, any of these artists' artwork. I, actually, as a matter of fact, I, it's probably my first time getting a comprehensive uh, little bit image of some of their practice. Um, so I'm, I'm like, I don't know if there is any consensus or like a thread that I can talk that connect to the three performances. Like I said earlier, I think they're pretty unique and different from each other, which also gave an image to our audience about how diverse the performance practice are today um, in the region of China. I'm trying to avoid the word, as I'm trying not to assign a nationality and identity to these artists, also maybe including myself. Um, and uh, what occurred to me in terms of double slides uh, practice which Fu Xiaodong here curated performance, I guess, and the title is Huan Dou, which is a video game in English is Contra, which was released in 1987. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the game, but it's a video game that kind of a company on our, uh, with our generation growing up. And what um, struck strike me most is sort of the group's practice and how the notion of collectivism and individualism are carried out through their practice and how the scale of this collectivism and individualism. Um, because I would say a lot of the work and the videos that you see might not be able to make the same sense if they're done by one individual. Um, and I'm interested in the scale in terms of how they manifest their practice. And also at the same time, you also see that their practice actually engaged the everyday of the reality in China. And it does signal a paradigm change of the Chinese society and how the society is reconciling itself and negotiating itself with the global condition. Um, and for Liu Ding's practice, which, I mean, I could not talk about his practice in general because he's a very, very diverse artist. Uh, performance is just one of his uh, take on his practice, I would say. Um, but for the piece just now, I think it's a new work created for thinking, you know, thinking performance, yeah? Um, at the same time, I sense a little bit about this sort of relationship between collectivism and individualism, as I see the three reader of the poem, uh, of the poem struggle to synchronize their voice and struggle to synchronize the narrative. And I actually enjoyed that very much as sort of this desire and, and, and this sort of uh, effort making to have a synchronized narrative is constantly interrupted by these imperfections. Um, and of course, again, you cannot stop thinking about how artists interact with the po poetic and the politics, because it is a series of points, as I believe, written by Liu Ding. Um, and for Tang Dixing, I guess um, it's a very unique performance as I, I really don't feel like I, I'm in the place to interpret that piece of work as it's my first time experiencing it. But it's really, it's, it's, it's not hard to imagine like the role of books played in, in the performance and it's not very difficult for us to associate the idea of history writing, the idea of, um, you know, the erasure and deconstruction. Um, so these are maybe some of the keywords that I, I can read from his performance. I'm going to hand it to Yanting. Maybe you will have a couple questions for the... Oh, yeah. 
Hey, hello everybody. I'm the artist. My presentation was at yesterday. And now, I think I'm just a little bit like Tang Dixin's work, because this is my, actually, the, you know, I knew his previous practice a lot from some other exhibitions or online the reports and reviews. But this is my first time to see the performance happens in, the, in reality. So I think his work is very strong connect with the resistance is how the artist draw out the use of material. So you how artists engage in the in a space or the daily principles or the limitations which we're suffering every day. So maybe I want to ask maybe at the microphone to Tanglish, maybe you could share with the audiences more about your how Wait, where are you coming from? The, let's say maybe it's not the inspiration, but where, where is your outline, your practice? Ah, uh, Jin, he asked you the question. Do you think do this 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 work, when it was being created, what did you think of it? What did you want to share with the audience? What did you want to share with the audience? What did you want Uh, just before I said, this is the first time I do translation. <laughs> I've been tasked for the last minute. I'm an expert at everything but translation. So, you can share something. So, you can share something. You can share something. Because in Changzhou, the artists who come to the show are all about the struggle, the struggle, the struggle, and the environmental conditions.对抗好像没有，我觉得没有具体的吧，可能有一些对抗，可能也是来源于自己的那种叫，也也不能说是挑战自己身体的那个极限，其实有时候是一个，呃，有一个极限的形状也好，或者是一个，怎么把这个东西
呃，下午好，谢谢你帮我翻译，谢谢燕醒的问题，也，嗯、呃，很高兴大家在这儿花十五分钟，可能到十八分钟的时间，来刚才听我的作品。嗯、呃，其实这个作品呢，是最早是在去年开始工作的一个作品，是从这个香港的这个雨伞运动之后，我接到这个伊斯坦布尔双年人的邀请，呃，为这个。项目开始工作的，其实，呃，我先让他翻译。呃、uh, ，this work is from last year. Uh, originated from Hong Kong by invitation of Istanbul Biennial. 嗯，当时在呃，我可以先不从说刚才燕醒的问题来先说，我先说一说这个事情的背景。嗯，我说一句，你翻译一句，这样别。The background of the work is. 嗯,嗯，其实去年的香港的雨伞运动之后，整个在中国的艺术界的反应，其实让我很惊讶，特别是年轻一代的艺术家。The umbrella movement in Hong Kong last year、uh, had very, very, very profound influence, especially the younger generation of the artists. 呃、嗯，其实我不是想太讲太多讲关于在作品中的所谓的政治和政治参与的问题，但是我只是讲一个个体和面对社会现实和面对周遭的一些反应和一些思考和或者说如果说你称得上是在这个参与知识创作或者是参与参与知识实践或者是艺术实践，作为一个个体的人，他在这个现实中的反应是什么？ It's not so much of political reflection, but more、uh, artists or you as a person in in the space of society or in participation of the art. What do you think of the work, and what do you think of yourself? Um, 当然就是说我的实践比较综合。刚才孟小雨也比较粗浅的介绍了一下。嗯，其实对我来说，嗯。任何的视觉的创作，其实并不我对我自己并不太满足。就我，包括策展，包括写作，对我来说，我都把它认为是一种实践。实践。实践。实践。嗯，再讲一次。嗯，那对我来说，对我的创作，嗯，那你讲。嗯，好，嗯 ，so， 呃 ，for loading， 嗯。His practice is very diverse, as I just introduced very briefly.、Um, and for him, he doesn't really differentiate、uh, the so-called visual art practice. An image for him is not enough. So he actually engaged with writing and curating and other activities, and they he all consider as a kind of practice. Uh, thank you, Wen Xiaoyu. Ah, that, um, so I, 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 很多事情带到一个真实的语境去，所以我尝试让我的身体和让我的工作去到一个更真实的平台。And through practice, he can bring all these different things into a more truthful context. 嗯，他的确通过一些实践和行动呢，让我看到了一些新的可能性。And through uh practice and and actions, I can see uh the new possibilities emerge. 呃、嗯，回到刚才这些诗歌来说，呃、嗯，其实我接到这个双年展的邀请的时候，我说我希望写一系列诗歌，但其实对我来说，我从来没有写过诗歌。After accepted invitation from the biennial, I thought I wanted to write some poems, but as a matter of fact, I've never written poems before. 呃，我只是在年轻的时候有很多作家的朋友，只是读他们的诗歌，或者是。我自己对于诗歌的一些认识，所以，嗯，从诗歌的角度上来说，我觉得可能是经验上是有一些局限，但我觉得这是一个最好的一个美材。Uh, but indeed, I had a lot of friends who were writers when I was young, and I absorbed a lot of experience,、uh, interaction with them when I was reading their work.、Uh, although I feel a little bit limited、um, in this medium, but I do think、uh, poem writing and poetry is a very great medium. 嗯，这些诗歌其实一共有三十一首。今天其实我选择了十五首，呃，大概是在这个十五，呃，十五分钟或十八分钟之内的一个时间段里能够读完的诗歌。
uh, I totally, I totally written, uh, wrote uh, 31 poems, and I selected 15 today, which to uh, respond to the time limit of 15 to 18 minutes today. Uh,这些诗歌主要是描写了从去年到今年在北京和在北京和我在欧洲的生活或者在美国的生活。所遇到的一些问题，而这些问题好像在这一两年之间突然变得对我来说突然变得很重要，而且事实上在这个时间的这个变，呃，新的政府上台和新的一代、下一代的和再下一代的出现，其实对我来说都是一个非常现实的一个
they have common interests, but at the same time, during their practice, their ideas and different opinions overlapped and juxtaposed with each other. Um, and then often the result is unexpected. Their practice actually reflect the relationship between individual and the collective, between um, and their um, how to say dependence as well as their independence. Internally, they have a kind of absolute democracy. Therefore, the result is unknown to any of the group members. Therefore, uh, in this process, the, the originality of their practice becomes possible. They're not based on their practice on any sort of uh, ready-made theory, but instead their uh, work are overlapping of different possibilities. They, their practice truly reflected the change of the both um, the spirit change and psychological change of the younger generation Chinese. So they start with sort of these characters of very resilient, like um, rebellious boy character and gradually grow into uh, intervene with global conditions and, and global situations. So the incidents and coincidence and chance opportunities actually um, predict not an unpredict, unpredictable situation of their practice uh, reflect the, the paradigm change of Chinese society. And in this process, there are some other keywords such as, you know, the humor. Um, humor is very important. And then, of course, the ambiguity of gender. And the same time, they kind of in, um, deconstruct the, the hierarchy of low and high art. And the change, the change of power, the rebellion deconstruction of power. They also, at the same time, hold this very sort of uh, radical, uh, critical attitude towards art institution in the system. So it's not necessarily as defined or categorized as performance art, but like a different uh, medium layering with each other. So um, Fu Xiaodong would like to coin it as um, live art. Should we? Do we have time for audience for questions? Or? Um, well, we, we, we're supposed to be in a break, so whoever wants to stay, um, they should, but we, we, we are supposed to go on a break. Um, if, uh, if anyone has a question, please go ahead, but if people need to go, 
on a break. Um, we will be back in 10 minutes um, for the last and final session of field meeting. Um, so if anyone has questions, please, from the audience, go ahead. Oh, question. Question. For the evening. For the evening. For the evening. You referred to what you had written as poetry rather than narrative. Um, and I'm wondering what definition of poetry you were using and what would be the distinction between your form of poetry and, say, traditional poetry within the literati. But I, I attempt to do some experiments in terms of the structure. So I'm actually trying to create this collage of by quoting. I use a lot of quotes. 呃, 尽量在这个诗歌中取消个人的情绪 And I try to cancel personal emotions 而且, 呃, 在文字上, 我也做了一些尝试, 呃, 其实在中国的文, 语言的这个方式是有很强的变迁的, 呃, 这个我做了稍微一些研究, 基本上我用的是建国以后的语言 and I also had some experiments in, in the words and the word structure. And uh, I did some research on the tra transition and change of Chinese language. And I primarily use uh, words and sentence and grammar that is after the founding of Republic China. And同样在今天的朗读的过程中,我也做了这个朗读的处理。声音跟文字的内容其实是不匹配的。声音是像机器一样的声音，但是今天因为现场可能有点嘈杂，然后呃没有最好的效果，但是呃我努力在做这个尝试。I also manipulated the performance today, uh, particularly by the voice and the content. So the voice is actually very mechanical, but um, because maybe there's a little bit noise in the perform uh, in, the, in today's uh, situation, so it's probably not the perfect. Um, uh, situation, but I'm I'm trying. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. I have a question for you. Um, I'm very happy to see your performance and to understand your work. My question is that uh, I've always noticed that in China, that the word is much more difficult than the image because uh, it's possible, and I've noticed, for instance, that even when we have produced work in China, every word has to be looked at carefully before the exhibition goes out. People don't worry so much about the object of the image. Um, and choosing to write poetry in those circumstances is also choosing that careful scrutiny of your work. Is that something that you're doing quite deliberately? That you know that in the question that I'm asking is in some ways Chinese contemporary art's exuberant visuality is also something quite safe. The word is more difficult. And you're making a choice. So I want to know a little bit about how you make that choice. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah. Do you want me to 
Can you repeat the question? Well, basically, oh. yeah, yeah. in China, it's much more difficult uh, to compose word. The, the wording has much more impact than the images. The EV building choose to use poem. Uh, is it a particular reason he, he choose this form? Um Actually, I always wanting to engage uh, language and words in my practice, especially uh, the change of Chinese language since the founding of the Republic has been uh, uh, fundamental. And in 49, yes. So the past 60 years compared to the traditional language. But in, 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 in social reality, language plays a very fundamental role, yeah? We can still see a lot of slogans. Yeah. Also in art criticism and literature criticism, the language itself it has uh, subconsciously become uh, almost the same as slogans. The slogan-like language actually simplified the language itself and uh, really diluted the diversity of the language. Uh, I would just share a little interest, interesting experience. When I passed these, th the, these points to these three readers, the first time when they read it, actually, um, a very, very, uh, very big difference among their, the, the taste and the, the, the uh, uh, but when they read it together, um, the three of them, their expression becomes uh, a lot more mild. Um, but when I asked them to change it to another way, more strong and more dramatic, it was actually a challenge for them. But when I request them to change tone to be more theatrical, and it becomes more challenging. Oh, sorry. The challenge is not that doesn't come from that they don't know how, but uh, instead it comes from how to be uh, theatrical and how to be very determined, the lacking of such um, aesthetic experience. But I, I, I think that such conflicts and tension are really important because language should and have to carry the specificity of the cultural context. It, 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 it's like in our uh, uh, everyday social reality, although we all look the same, we're similar, everybody to each other, but actually the signifier, the signifier and the signified are very complicated and different. Thank you. Can I ask a very brief follow-up question? Sure. Can you imagine a Chinese language of the future 500 years from now? <laughs> I want to share with you 
I hopefully I don't any idea, but uh, I now the language is very limited for the China now. So if you do the research, if you do the any practice, you want to do the many detail, you want writing, you want thinking the more the detail. So the language is limited in China for now. Mm. Because yeah, if you do the, this kind of practice, I think it's difficult. Well, thank you very much. Oh, you have a question. As long as you're okay with the time, because you're the one who's. We're officially in a break. <laughs> Uh, 
也可以叫政治的某种关系，就是就是比如说我在跳下地铁之后，爬起来看到那个司机，那个司机吓死了，因为他以为把我弄死。就是有一些东西是真实的，不过而而且后面是进了那个监狱，能够看到一些真实的东西，就是就是跟你谈话那个人是在这个体系内的，就是你能体验到那个具体的过程。所以我觉得那个政治。不一定是我可能说我走上大街，我喊一个那个口号，或者是一个，可能是我自己的一种方式吧，就是个人化的。He wants to talk a little bit more of the concept of resistance, which was brought up earlier, um, and he doesn't think that there are certain layers of politics there, but it's more about about the politics of the body. He's more interested in how also the connection of the body and also the idea of empathy. Um, as I don't know, uh, maybe some of you know his earlier work. He had a performance piece which he jumped off um, the the rare track and the subway uh, when the train was approaching, um, and he was he, he had to be put in prison for two days for, for the for the action. But he was saying that he uh, felt something from the the eyes and facial expressions of the driver of of the train, which of course he thought he was almost going to kill him. So such confrontation is very personal, but it also carries into the level of politics. And for him it's more interesting as how politics involve in such conditions. And if I can add to that, do you think this piece of work is, is this personal brand of slogan? Well, thank you so much. Um, should we have, have no, no, yeah, Yang Jun, you say a few words since you come here. Yes, 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 yes. You saw what? Game over. No more work. Yeah, game over. Oh, game over. Game over. Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone.